try to tell people on Instagram, but come over to Facebook. Yes. We are live in Seattle, Washington. So let's get where we can see things. Da, da, da. So, looks like we have one lone viewer. Thank you for being the first viewer. We appreciate that. Um, thank you guys for coming on to our live. This We are Green Juju, so my name is Billy, and I am Vice President of Green Juju, and this is Kelly, and she is the owner and founder of Green Juju. So, uh, starting out, you know, we love to do these lives because we love transparency and we love the fact that, you know, we as consumers, you know, we like to know who's making our products and why they're making our products and be able to ask questions and, um, all of those good things. And so that is why we are here. Um, make sure we can. Hi to Julia from Vermont and Jessica. So sounds like uh, people are so, so get those questions ready as well as so um, we like to have a theme for each of these lives. And so um, one of the things that we've been thinking about lately, especially with our product line is, you know, small changes that owners can make to their dog's diets or their cat's diet um, to make, you know, a big impact. And I'm sure most of you watching this have a story like that. So maybe if you have a question about that or if you have a story or you'd like to share with us, we'd love to read those um, and be able to do that. So um, we are at uh, Green Juju headquarters, correct? Correct. Okay. So mm -hmm. Kelly, is there anything that um, you want to start with when it comes to small changes um, and pet nutrition, health, and starting green juju. Well, I think one of the very like core things of starting green juju and starting the Just Greens blend, um, you know, first of all was because I had Bailey, my dog who had cancer, and I formulated this to try and help her. I also had a dog walking business at the same time, and um, I was very very attached to my clients and people would give me eight week old puppies and go off to work and I got to raise these puppies and you know every health problem or anything that came along like I felt really invested in um and as any raw feeder on here knows when you learn about raw feeding you want to tell everybody about raw feeding um but then you also learn you might overwhelm people which I quickly learned um and so I figured out that the best way to get to my clients and to help them make changes in their diets was through green juju and through just adding a little bit of greens to the bowl and not overwhelming them with all of this information that I learned about raw diets and why this was the one way to go. It's not the only way to go. Um, you can start wherever you're at and you can add different things. And actually back in this day, Billy and I were friends and he was selling raw goat's milk when nobody knew what it was. And so I was telling people, you know, add some green juju, add some raw goat's milk, you're adding fresh food to the diet. And so I think it was, I mean, I saw the effects of how much more approachable it was for my clients to adapt this mentality than to like, whoa, hold on, I have to start a whole new diet for my dog and I have to learn this whole new process and I have to thaw things and like, that just wasn't, it was asking too much. Um, but to just say, hey, add a plop of this or a splash of this, that was something people could do and they saw results and it was encouraging and it led a lot of them to make further changes or the ones that just stayed with what they did, like they made amazing impact on their dogs by just making those changes. So small changes. Yeah, and I think, you know, a lot of us have taken a journey, um, even even in my, my own, you know, with Lua, in getting a dog. So, you know, one of the stories I like to tell is I never had a dog growing up and, you know, I was very famously scared of a group of golden retriever puppies once that didn't have mm -hmm. their eyes open. So I was like eight years old running through the yard, like terrified of these puppies because um, we never had any pets growing up. And so, you know, for me, I was starting at, you know, zero when it came to getting Lua and learning about her nutrition. Now, for me, that's never become an uninteresting question, right? What drives me is how can we do better, you know, continuously and how do we, you know, we, we know so much more than we did about fresh food diets, but how can we get better? But that was a journey for me in very small increments, right? I think we uh, I think a lot of us, 
you know, I started with by getting better kibble. And then I moved up to, you know, adding some canned food. And then I moved up to, well, if I'm doing this, why can't I make my own cooked food or whatever it might be? So I think a lot of us have taken that journey. Um, uh, and it's exciting. And I think, um, you know, being able to share that with people is really cool. Um, and I think that's one of the things that, you know, brought me here and wanting to work for this company is because of the fact that we can make these small changes that are going to make a huge impact and that's going to get, you know, the scope of all affecting all of these dogs. One of the cool cats. things about making these small changes is that you realize that you have the power to change your dog's health. Um, that whatever whether they're perfectly healthy to begin with and you want to keep them healthy or whether they have some, you know, health issue that you're working through, like you have the power to help feed that health or, you know, help, I don't know, help nurture, feed your way out of the illness or however you would say that. I don't know. But anyways, these small changes make a big difference in, in changing your dog's overall health, which I, I found incredibly empowering with Bailey. Um, I was kind of, she had a rare cancer. I went to like six or seven vets. I wasn't getting any good information. And then I realized that what I was doing at home was making a difference for her. And that was so empowering that like, I could help her just by what I put in her bowl. And you could see it. And that's the real thing is seeing it. And that's what we've all come to, you know, uh, we were talking about this earlier. When it comes to, you know, scientific evidence, the best scientific evidence you can have is how happy and healthy is your own dog? Um, and so that's what we're here to help with. Um, I was gonna, oh, I was gonna say, before I go down to the questions, the thing that I'm doing right now, which is an increment of small changes, which is really fun for me, is I haven't had a puppy in many, many years. And so I have 15, <laughs> 15 years. And so having Huckleberry at home, uh, it when you get a puppy, and especially when you feed the way that, uh, you know, if you're a raw feeder or whatever it might be, it's taking these, making these small changes to see what works for them specifically. Cause there is no one size fits all diet for every dog. And so with him, I'm making these small tweaks to see like, oh, this is better for, you know, probiotics than this might be for him. And so that's been fun for me to be able to kind of figure that out because feeding Huckleberry is much different than feeding Lua. So, um, you know, and speaking of older dogs, we would like to say that it is Bam's birthday. And she should make an appearance. Yes, you should go get her. In two days, it is going to be Bam's birthday. And once once we get her over here, we will let you guys know how. Let's take guesses. Yeah, let's take guesses. So we're going to um, we're going to bring Bam on uh, short for Bambi, and then we're going to take guesses. So if you guys want to say how old. And then we'll announce it after we get some of those because sometimes there's a bit of a delay. But she has the sweetest face. We're, we're not going to brag, but um, so it is her birthday in two days. And so let's see. And she is the other, we hear about Bailey a lot, but she is the other green juju dog. So she's the reigning queen. Yes, absolutely. Um, so put your guesses in and we'll go to, so I um, We'll go to some of the comments and questions here. It looks like Hope also, she has a, a dog walking pet care business in Maine. Those are fun days. And those are such great businesses for connecting with people. And I really haven't been to Maine yet. So I'm like, I really want to do that. It seems like a beautiful place. So I love that you train people. That is so true. <laughs> and that uh, is so true that nutrition makes a huge difference in behavior. But nutrition consultant that I worked with in formulating this, she had a agreement with people that she wouldn't train their dogs unless they agreed to change the dog's diet because she was just like, I just can't, I can't work with dogs on a certain, if they're not on the right type of diet. So that's, that's great to see that. Uh, Carleen says this is like her journey. Uh, invested in my clients, and the story is very similar. So that's what's really cool. It kind of brings us all together there. Um, I see. Okay. Um, 
Uh, thank you, JD, for picking up some more of the bison green bites for the, for your cat. We love to hear that. We love to hear. Um, remember, cats love our treats. They're very high in organ meat, which is amazing for cats because of the wonderful uh, nutrient density of both heart and liver. So very cool. Um, I know a lot of people are very concerned with taurine, which is you know very high in uh, taurine in the hearts there. Um, so Erica says, so thankful for the new products. Green Juju has been the number one most amazing thing for my dog with so many issues. I am forever grateful and such a big fan and supporter. Thank you, Erica. So grateful for Bailey as well. Oh. That is very nice. Made my day. Ah, there you go. Um, so Julia says baby steps. Um, that her foster has been on raw for three months. Um, amazing to transition. I'm hoping he gets adopted. I agree. Um, that's the wrong thing. So Eric says, happy birthday, Bam. And it looks like Hope is going to pick up some of the treats as well. Um, so I think this is a familiar story that uh, people um, can relate to. Uh, Megan says, I had a very picky eater, but once I started adding fresh food and lots of variety in her diet, she began to love eating. I think that that's not only makes sense from a taste perspective, because that's one of the things that I need to focus on more. I'm very nutrition focused, but I also need to focus on the fact that dogs and cats just love eating fresh food versus, you know, eating processed food. How you're going to refer to your dog eating habits. <laughs> <laughs> I do need to focus on my 10% uh, bad eating habits, but Bambi, when she was on a processed diet as a puppy, she hunger she would go on hunger strikes for days, um, and then once we changed, she the only time she we were just talking about this the only time she misses a meal now is if I put down the bowl and walk away. She has like FOMO. I have to be near her when she eats, but I definitely definitely noticed the change in having a picky eater. Um, she likes. She likes fresh food and variety, and she likes the good stuff. Absolutely, and and I think we can all relate to that on that level. And um, I also think too, though, it's somewhat uh, biological as well, because I think once you start adding in fresh foods, and once you start, you know, getting diversity in the microbiome, I mean, there's a lot of studies now that are showing that in especially humans that microbiome can affect you know mood and mood disorders like adhd and things like that and so i think the same it's the same thing with animals i think they're just happier when they're getting that diversity of nutrients and plus you know on, on the fresh foods we just don't know what they're going to be you know potentially deficient in. so variety is the key there especially adding our blends our two green blends and our golden blend so natalie says uh so we got a few guesses here when it comes to... Um, Bam, you're looking old, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so we have 8, 13, 14. Julie, Julia says that, she, that she's adorable, which is obviously true. We have 12. We have 14. 18. 18. She could pass for five. Erica, you are my person today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jerry says 12. Um, so do you want to tell... Tell them how old Bam is going to be in two days. Bam will be 12 in two days. And I hope she makes it to 18. I would be what thrilled. What do you think, huh? She does sleep enough, too. <laughs> <laughs> so Bam is going to be 12, and she's like, yes, put me down. I want to go lay down somewhere. Yes, get cozy. So we have two French Bulldogs in at Green Juju that are uh, separated by many years. So Lauren says, I'm giving my dog around two tablespoons of the blends each day, 40 to 55 pounds. They are on raw diets. Do you think that is enough green juju? I'm sure it is helping my dogs, but I want to make sure I'm giving enough. Um, I'm trying to think of... So there's many ways you can think about this. I will tell you how I figured out for my dog how much green juju I wanted to do. I put down the raw food, and then I scooped in as much as I thought looked like the right amount of greens, right? Which some people oh, might call <laughs> the, the flop method. So um, you can also look on the packaging and say, and see what the suggested mm -hmm. is. But keep in mind, it's just whole food. 
So, and no animal is going to become overweight from you know a little too much green juju. So it's really what works for your dog. I think two tablespoons a day, um, if it's working for you, sounds great. Um, you could do more than that if you felt like you wanted to get. And keep in mind, I think too that there's another, there's a greater point here in that uh, if you're on, if your dog is on a raw diet and it includes vegetables, it's still great to add the green juju in because you want that diversity of plants. You want, you know, all of those extra antioxidants, all of those extra vitamins and minerals. Um, all of those things are going to be really great. So I think that's awesome what you're doing there. Um, I would just, so I would add to that, I think the instruction, the feeding instructions on the packaging is intended for somebody that's feeding a fully processed diet. And so that's what that's intended for. With what you're doing, I think, based off the plot method, uh, I think you could do two tablespoons per meal. So it sounds like you're doing two tablespoons per day. I think you could do two per meal, but you absolutely don't have to. So if this is working for you, go for it. Um, any little bit helps, and I think that's a great amount. So if it's working, keep doing it. If you wanted to add more, you could. I know you're probably looking for us to tell you exactly what to do, but mm -hmm. that's the great thing about everyone's dogs is every dog is gonna be a little bit different, and you know your dog better than we do. Yeah. So you'll know uh, exactly um, Bailey went for, she, her diet required way more greens than Bambi does. Um, so it was, you know, every dog's different. Julia says, such a sweetheart. And Carlene works with puppies and elderly dogs. I cannot believe Marilyn was late. How dare you? Um, the good thing is, Marilyn, that if you want to see the beginning, it will not only be on our Facebook wall, but it will also be on our YouTube channel. And this is a good opportunity for me to tell everyone to A, share this with your friends, and B, go subscribe to our YouTube channel because there's gonna be lives there, there's product videos if you're a retailer, um, there's training videos there, there are um, playlists with interviews with me and me and Kelly, so there's a lot of uh, cool information there. So go check out our YouTube and you can see the beginning of this, Marilyn. Um, Hope says I should check out the dog wash in Portland, Maine. They stock your products in our great small local pet store. Thank you to the dog wash, and I would love to go check out Portland, Maine, because I hear really good things about Portland, Maine. I've been to Portland, Oregon a lot, but I've never been to Portland, Maine. So I hear they're so, somewhat similar. Uh, Beth says, we love green juju at Dogs by Design in PA and plan to feature it in our St. Patrick's Day promos. Uh, I, I'm trying to remember where you are, where Dogs uh, by Design is in PA. So if you could remind me, Beth, that'd be great. And thank you for doing that. Um, Deanna adds 15% veg to her dog's homemade diet. How much dehydrated juju would I add to a pound of meat? Um, I don't know if you would scale it that way. I would just make your diet in terms of however you do your homemade diet with the meat and then uh, look at the recommended dosage on the um, freeze-dried green juju. What would you do? It's just a one-to-one -one rehydration ratio, you know? So if you want, like, I don't know what 15% would be for you, but if you want a quarter cup of greens, then you would do a quarter cup of the powder, add a quarter cup of um, water, and that would rehydrate. There you go. So there's a couple of options there. Hope says that Bambi is a smart girl. Uh, Claire is grateful for dried just greens. Uh, my dogs and I are living in a tiny home, so I appreciate the fridge space. Love you guys. You are welcome. And that was um, her brainchild, so you can thank Kelly for that one. That was years and years in the making. We finally got it out there. And it's, people have been really excited about it, so I'm really happy to hear that. Uh, Aspen says, we've fed green juju ever since it was made that made its way to the East Coast. We love stuffing their West Paw toys with green juju products and freeze them. Good idea. And they perfectly complement her Frenchie's diet. So there's Frenchie's everywhere today. <laughs> um, yeah, Jessica says she's very well taken care of and she's very mellow. Yes, she's sitting next to me now. So We had a, <laughs> a call with a vet earlier today 
not her vet. And she, what did she say? She said she said something really good about oh, her. Oh, yeah. Exactly. yeah. We, were, exactly. we were talking to um, a vet, and the vet was saying that she looked like the best French bulldog she's ever seen for that age. Yeah, so, I'll take that. Yeah. So, I'll take that. Right? And I would agree. I think she looks great. Uh, Claire says, supplement recommendations for large breed puppy on raw. Um, for large breed puppy, I would recommend both our blends and our bone broth. So, um, broth yeah, it's good to get, um, you know, to, a lot of people when they think about large breed puppies just think about um, calcium and phosphorus mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. sort of like ratio. However, you know, think about when your dog's joints are developing, there's many different things that make up those joints, you know, like uh, collagen, like glucosamine, like chondroitin, all of these, you know, uh, small things that people don't uh, think about a lot, or maybe just think about with senior dogs. These are things that animals need throughout their entire life. And so we make amazing bone broth. We make a duck and a bison bone broth. So, um, you know, we have novel protein bone broth, and um, uh, I would recommend both of those things. Um, but all of our products are applicable to pretty much every dog in some to some degree. So, um, yes. Are you Claire with the Roddy? We can just ask her. I think you are. If I didn't know that by looking at your name, then you can just be mad at me because that would be ridiculous. Um, I'm glad you you are smarter than me. Well, I don't remember the last thing. We have new products coming out in May. Oh, we just. There you go. See, I take my cues from you in terms of like what I can say. Well, we don't know what they are. We <laughs> That's know true. There's something in May. That's true. We're not saying what they are, but there's something coming in May, and we're very excited about it, and we're very excited to share that with you guys. So, get excited as well. I think you guys are going to be pretty happy. Hi to Marianne up there in on the East Coast. Jules Animal House. Uh, did you cover? when the new products will be available. Just did. We just mentioned that there will be products in May. So and Julie, if that's you, can we come visit you this week? Are you there? Are you sick? I think you're sick. I yeah. You're <laughs> if you're there, we would I really wanted to come and see the store. So let us know if that's a possibility. Um Katina, right? Is that Yes, Katina, I hope I got your name right. I just found out about you all from Dr. Judy Morgan's site recently. Uh, your tips have been very helpful and I received my bison green and beef red and they love it. Learning more every day. Uh, they love me adding some whole foods. I'm trans transitioning to freeze-dried raw. Um, could you suggest some ways to give your freeze-dried whole food bites? Don't you do something with uh, BAM, specifically with the whole food bites? Um, I mean, if you really want to know, when I skip a raw meal, I rehydrate it with bone broth and call it a cheat meal. Um, but I also feed them as treats, or like when it gets to the bottom of the bag and it's kind of powdery, I just crum like put the crumbles on top of her food. Um, I've seen a lot of people do really creative things with like getting those molds and putting bites in them and putting like bone broth or goat's milk or something and freezing them so they have little like molds with a bunch of different things in them. Um, but really the intention was to just be toppers on top of a meal or carry them around as training treats. They're super, super palatable and we've heard that they've been really, really successful as training treats because they're so palatable and with that high organ content. So. Um, you know, when you're training a dog, they can kind of be like that, the the special recall treat kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, not just the everyday treat, but like the, the this is important one. Um, so yeah, those are some ways. Well, and one of the ways I use it, my dog's favorite activity, I have a little um, sort of like rubber Christmas tree that you put treats into, mm -hmm. and I just put a bunch of them in there, and he's actually becoming too smart for it, like he knows how to position it so they come out, yeah. you know, but... He loves to do that. He's very smart. We just, we just, I was very, I'm not a dog trainer at all. So we were very happy. He's starting to use the bell at the back door. So that was very excited. It took Bambi seven years. You're doing pretty <laughs> so, well. <laughs> he's using the bell. So that was really cool. And uh, so that's one of the ways that, um, oh yes, Dogs by Design in Irwin. I was just there. That's why it was on the 
that's why I was thinking of that. Um, you guys are great. Uh, but, yeah, so there's many ways to use our treats um, as a topper, as treats. And he also, when it came to potty training, Huckleberry, um, he just went, he goes crazy for all of our treats. And so those are big motivators for him. Um, and he's been doing really well there. So, um, uh, Beth says, which blend would be better for the kidneys? I mean, I think, uh, I don't know if there's really a distinction there between those four, uh, specifically, I'm thinking, I mean, if you can think of anything there. The only thing I can think of is that Bailey's blend has chard and the golden blend has golden beets, which both have oxalates, which aren't great for kidney issues. So I would probably lean towards the just greens, but, um, you can add on to that. I would, yeah, I would say if it, it really just depends on the dog because I don't think that they're in high enough probably amounts, yeah. but First, sensitive yeah, it depends on how sensitive the dog is. So if you were gonna, if you were gonna be like, play it safe. Really, yeah, that's a good, that's a good term for it. Really play it safe. We'd go with the just greens, but otherwise, especially if you're looking at a healthy animal and just general support, all of the things and all the things you're looking for in our blends, the the fiber, the the antioxidants, all those things are gonna just contribute to a healthy diet anyway. So um, I think they would all be pretty a applicable. Um, Julia does says that Maine is absolutely beautiful. I would, uh, I was trying to get my wife to do Maine instead of Vermont this year on our trip, but we're doing Vermont because uh, one of the reasons we named our daughter Maple was because we go to Vermont, so we figure we have to take her there. So hopefully we can get Maine in there at some point. Um, huge noise going on below us. Um, we're. Green Juju headquarters is combined with my husband's warehouse, which has everything loud possible. So <laughs> we just deal with it. So we're here. So um, what is your recommendation if a dog must cut calcium? Um, that's kind of a hard question without knowing anything about your dog. Uh, but with our products, the calcium is not really going to affect the overall diet in a super significant way. Like what I'm trying to get at is you're not going to have so much calcium in bone broth that it's going to like unbalance the diet or something. And especially in our blends, I mean, that's not going to be an issue. So if you're talking about the overall diet, that might be a question for someone else. But um, with our products, I wouldn't worry about it. Jewel says, Woot, is it May yet? So that's my nerd version of Woot right there. <laughs> wow. I knew it was Claire. Yeah. Um, yes, and, uh... Her dog loves you. You didn't even know who she was. <laughs> well, well, when I, we lived in L.A., Claire came over for some game nights, and Miles would take Lua's bed. Oh. So, oh, um... So you guys do know each other. Yes, so those were, those were great nights. Um, so, Nicole says it is available in Canada. We are available in Western Canada. We are working on Eastern Canada, so stay tuned for that. Um... Oh. Looks like we're road tripping to Marysville. Yes, yeah, so we are coming to visit you, Jules, Animal House. Um, oh, Marilyn's hound turns 12 today, so they can be uh, birthday twins there. Um, Julie has all five of her dogs and her foster on the veggie blends, and they love them. Um, I put them in their lick mats. I actually was at the store yet the other day, and I was thinking it's time for me to get a lick mat. Uh, Bambi that... is way too lazy for that. <laughs> she would just walk away from it. Like, like, I'll wait until the next meal. Thank you very much. Because there's two sides to my dog. Uh, one side is we work at a co-working space, and he just sits in the chair with me, and everybody's like, he's so calm. He's so, absolutely incredible. And he is when we're at the co-working space. When we get home, he does 50 laps in the yard and is a total maniac. So the licky mat, I think, would be a good uh, good thing for him. Uh, Meg, uh, Megan says, what do you think can be done to better educate vets on the amazing benefits of fresh, raw, real food? My vet praises my dog's health, but I find myself downplaying what I'm feeding uh, my only English sheep dog. It's, well, that's a great question, and I will say it is getting a lot better. I personally have spoken at several you know, veterinary colleges and um, have even guest taught in uh, veterinary tech classes. 
Um, so there's a lot more um, openness to it, and I think that's because people are seeing results. Um, it's really hard to argue with results, especially on an individual basis, and there's a lot more uh, information. We were, you know, there could be a cool announcement coming soon about some of the stuff that we're looking to do in the future and support. Um, so um, I just think it's really about education, but if you look now compared to, you know, the amount of holistic vets who are, you know, supporting uh, feeding fresh, raw, and real foods is, is exponentially more than when I got into the industry, like, you know, 12 years ago or whatever it was. Um, I would suggest um, buying a copy of the Forever Dog book that, uh, you think? Yeah. That Dr. Karen Becker and Rodney Hibby have just put out. It's like, I mean, it, they've made this incredible book that has all this great information about feeding fresh and nutrition and everything, but put it in a really, really um, research-backed, where are you going? Oh, um, in a really research-backed, but also accessible way. Um, so I think I would give them a copy of that and see how that does. And um, if that doesn't kind of open a conversation, personally, I would probably look for another bet, but um, that's just me. And I'll add to that once I, so I had to plug this guy in here, so I apologize for that. I'll add to that as well and say that like, so there's a few ways you can go about it too. Uh, there are going to be situations where your vet, you know, doesn't, just doesn't want the information and that's fine. I mean, and, and part of it is too, these vets are very busy and, you know, it's kind of difficult to, you know, keep up to date on this stuff. But sometimes, you know, they're just not going to come around to a fresh feeding diet and maybe there's not another vet in your area maybe all that's the, there are those situations and it's okay to to agree to disagree it's okay to just say to your vet hey look we're going to do this this way i understand how you feel about it but we're still going to come in and we still want to do you know the tests or whatever you want to do and it's okay to do that you know it's it's definitely i know a lot of people in that situation as well so um but we're definitely in support of you know, we attended the last Holistic Veterinary Conference and we're working with, you know, uh, vets and, and looking to work with vets in the future. And so we're definitely in support of educating all of those holistic vets. So um, looks like Suki is, is uh, wanting some sardines. Mm -hmm. So um, Carlene says, loving some of the new products that I've been able to find. Can't wait to try the bone broth. Haven't found some who has it yet. Love the greens and Bailey's blend. The freeze-dried bison is awesome. Well, that's great. Now, your stores should be able to get, if they can get everything else, they can get the bone broth. You might just have to ask them to order it for you. And it looks like my, before Miles passed, he also enjoyed the green juju. So... Um, Nicole says, will your bone broth ever be on drjudymorgan.com? I, we don't know. It's on our website. I don't know if she ships frozen. I, I'm not really familiar with her website. I don't think so. Okay. That, I mean, it's a pain, so I wouldn't be surprised if she doesn't. Uh, but we do ship it from our website. There you go. Straight from the source. So, uh, Suki in Omaha. Um, her pups love the treats. So shout out to, I think you guys just had a store anniversary. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I think uh, Green Spot, I always get them confused with Green Dog. Green Dog is in Portland, right? Green Spot, I think just had their 10 year anniversary. If I'm right about that, I'm gonna be really proud of myself. Uh, Stacy made a small change to the turkey tail mushrooms from Dored Beast. A Dored Beast was my small change recently too. There you go. Big fan. Oh, that's that's cool. So Aspen showed up to a training class with the freeze-dried beef, and my dog was so obsessed. My trainer asked what I was using and got some herself. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I've actually tried to, um, you were talking about the dog place across the street here. Mm -hmm. um, I gave them like boxes and boxes of samples to use in their training classes and stuff. Try and get people up. Absolutely. Julia says we live in Vermont. I, Julie, link on your homepage is not working. 
Oh. Can you tell me what you mean about for the IG link on your homepage? Oh, it's probably page? just a link to Instagram. We will look into that, if that's what you mean. Katina, if you could let us know. Um, I have to read this one because it says our neighbor runs a maple syrup business, which is obviously, we love the word maple, so. We like maple syrup. <laughs> um, is there a course available online where we can learn more about pet nutrition? If you, like Billy was mentioning earlier, we have our YouTube channel, which is just YouTube slash Green Juju. Um, YouTube.com slash Green Juju. And we have a lot of videos, um, like just trainings about all of our products, about specific products, like past lives. So a whole bunch of info there. Um, so that would be, if you're looking for Green Juju info, that would be a good place to go. What do you know about general pet nutrition? There's a lot of, uh, I feel like there's a lot of courses out there now. Um, you know, uh, I'm just trying to think of what any of them are offhand, but there's more and more coming out each year. Um, so, you know, I would just get on the internet and... If we think of any, we'll put them in Yeah, the there you go. Yeah, we'll put them in the comments if we can think of any, but there's, um, there is a lot of information out there and there's a lot of kind of DIY ones which can give you great information, but then there's also some official ones. There's even some official ones where you can like get, you know, an actual education in it outside of, you know, it's not like getting a four year degree or something, but you know, you can... Dogs naturally have one. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you can take it really as far as you want with some of these things. Um, Megan already got her Forever Dog book. Um, Carly, I gave the staff all a copy of Where Your Friend Is Week. Where you seeing that? This one. Oh. Um, you want a pamphlet on Green Juju info? If so, just email us at info at greenjuju.com and we can get you all the info we have. If you email info at greenjuju.com, we'll have our secretary take care of the, the thing. By yeah, our secretary. So me after I put my kids to bed at night. I'll be right there. So we'll do that. Um, uh, my vet lives at the office, so dedicated. Good idea for the book as a gift. She is open-minded to feeding raw and supplements. And there you go. I'm so proud of myself. I was right. It is 10 years at Green Spot. So um, tell Jess and Whitney that I say congratulations. And uh, um, Jess is on my mind because she just posted a picture of Lua on her stories, which made my day the other day. So, so Katina, one yeah. more thing. Are you talking about on the website, the IG icon isn't available? Yeah. Okay. That's what she said. Okay. Noted. Figured. So we will do that. Uh, Suzanne says, will you be in Albany? I will be in Albany. So I will be at the Healthy Dog Expo in Albany um, there to answer questions. We'll actually have a booth there. So that's very exciting. Yes, so we do need to make the booth. <laughs> this is why we get together, so we can Tomorrow. do things like that. Um, we'll have a booth there, so um, I'll be hanging out and would love to. Suzanne, I've, I've met you, um, and you're great, and I would love to meet everyone else. So um, Suzanne actually gave me a little tiny statue of Lua, oh, and it's so it's one of the coolest things I've ever gotten. That so. is so sweet. Um, Ann says, don't forget about Wisconsin and Cheryl's Healthy Pet Market. But after March 5th, because she's moving to a bigger location, it would definitely be after March 5th. I talk about being in Wisconsin a lot because that's where I'm from. So that's definitely a possibility. Definitely have uh, Ann have the people at Cheryl's Healthy Pet Market, if it's you or someone else, reach out to us. Um, and I'd be happy to stop by at some point because I um, am there pretty frequently. So I'll do this. Uh, is it okay to heat the greens and golden blend on the stove? So the the reason that people typically want to heat up vegetables is to make them more digestible and because when you heat something up, you're breaking down the cell walls. But the, the process that we use to make our blends is we juice them and then we separate the juice from the pulp and then we blend it all back together. So we're essentially doing that pre-digestion process on our own but keeping it raw and when you introduce heat you start to lose nutrients so we kind of have the best of both worlds in that it's already pre-digested but we still get to keep all the good nutrients so 
I would not recommend heating it unless there's another reason I don't know about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, I would concur. Um, Suki says Lua is in our hearts. So thank you for that. Um, and she says it's lots of hard work at the store and I agree. And I, I, I've also been told that a certain celebrity shops at your store in Omaha, which is very cool. So, um, there's not many celebrities in Omaha, so, uh, it just happens to be my favorite band. So that's pretty awesome as well. Uh, Bright Eyes. So specifically Connor Roberts, apparently. Um, so Judy says, thank you for all you do. Can't wait to see what you bring us next. So that will actually probably be a good note to, uh, uh, end on is to say, um, you know, we're super excited to, you know, continue to educate you guys on the stuff that we've, that we have on the market and is making a difference in so many pets lives. And we're very excited, you know, having, you know, dropped that we're going to have some new stuff in May. That's very exciting as well. I think you guys will be really, you know, jazzed when that stuff comes out. And as I always say, and I'll give you the last word, but as I always say, you know, we really appreciate you guys coming on to these lives and asking us questions and talking about, you know, the small changes that you guys have made. And, um, and it's really cool because, you know, I'm sure you guys are affecting pets lives every day, you know, with, with a lot of the information that you get here or other places and how to add fresh food to, to pet sites. So thank you for that. And we will continue to, you know, be transparent and make the best possible things that we can. So, anything you want to add? I don't know why you gave me the last word. I can say this better than that. <laughs> Other than thank you for coming and thank you for caring about this brand and, you know, thank you for being a part of this whole journey. I never thought, never thought it would be here, but I'm so grateful for all of you. All right. Well, we will see you guys soon and everybody have a good day.